Hey guys, welcome to D Town TV. I'm Matt Klaska. No, I'm kidding. I'm Larry Becker. <laughs> no, this and is RC. What's RC. going on, everybody? How you guys doing? Uh, episode two. Yeah. New season. It's actually 113. Episode 113. Whew. Yeah. Second episode of a season. Entirely too many episodes. Entirely too many episodes. No, can't, the I, fan base I, loves it. I think it. it's good. I mean, I think it's good. That's, but you know, that's a lot of episodes. That's a lot of camera tips. That's true. If you guys are just picking this up, and I know that there's a lot of you that are picking this up on YouTube, on Google Plus, and things like that, and you guys even probably are watching live, make sure that you go back either through iTunes or through the Kelby TV website. There's a lot of episodes for you to catch up on. So good stuff. There's yeah, there's tons of different things out there. So make sure that you go take a look at those. I was just sitting there and I was kind of like basking on 113 episodes. Right. Jesus, that's that's good. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. But anyway, uh, a couple of housekeeping notes. You guys are watching, and some of you may be watching this, and this is the second of the live taping. KelbyTV.com forward slash on air. So all of our shows are going to be, when we're recording the shows, we figured it'd be a good idea to just kind of put them up there sure. live while we're recording it. Makes it easier for you guys to watch. This is the website where you can actually watch them. Now, we've got some people commenting on Google Plus and things like that, but we're working on putting like a chat module up in the on-air site so that anybody who's watching on-air can kind of talk to each other. That is in the works. Uh, tons of different people that are just watching in the last show, and we were getting tips from that. Stefan actually answered this tip on the paper. So he was talking about paper, and he said, all right, well, bring out the D800. So I said, all right, cool. So I ran out, D800. Uh, I've got some stuff on this. Now, I, I don't want to spend the time talking about the show because we've got some tips, uh, great tips at that. But one of the things that I will tell you is that there is a lot of information on this camera, there, there's, it stores a lot of information. Mm -hmm. It has more tonal range. The files are great. What I want you to do is I want you to go to my Google Plus account, gplusrc.com. If you go there, that's going to, or RCG Plus, either one of them work. <laughs> I've, I've registered both of them. But if you go to rcgplus.com, I actually have some sample files right on there. Look through the stream and you'll find a D800 where I give people raw files for them to play with. That's nice. So it's one of those things where it's just like, you know, you want to take a look at it yourself rather than me cooking the file. There, I know I know some people that have it on order and just can't get it. And that, just anything D800, we just want that information. So. Yeah, so there's some stuff on there. So I'm going to take a look at that. I'll talk about this also through the season. Uh, it's a phenomenal. This isn't my camera. This is Scott Kelby's camera. Um, I'm in the same line as everybody else is. Yeah. So just we're blessed. If you need to do, if you need to rent it, though, Right, uh, I know Lens Pro to Go has it. I thought you were gonna rent Scotts. No, if you need to rent it, <laughs> send me an email. Lens Pro to Go has it, so I would recommend that you guys go check with them. That said, I have a tip from Mr. Michael Corsentino. Yes, yeah, he was on, sweet so I figured thing. you guys could take yeah. a look at this. Hey everybody, welcome back. I am here with wedding and portrait photographer, editorial wedding and portrait photographer. Now, you're internationally known, but you're based out of San Francisco, California, That's Mr. Correct. Michael Corsentino. Michael, what's going on, man? Good to be here. Thanks yeah, for having me. Good to have you, man. Good to have you. I'm excited that you came down and actually said hi. This Same is, here. Absolutely. This is cool. All right, now listen. For those of you who don't know who Michael Gorsentino is, tell us a little bit about what it is, tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure, well as RC said, I'm a wedding and portrait photographer based in the Bay Area in California, Northern California. Uh, I shoot destination weddings and I also shoot editorial portraits uh, on location as well as studio work and do a lot of workshops and that sort of thing, like to teach okay. and kind of get the message out there about how great photography is. Nice. So, got a couple things here on the iPad. This I is, like that. Thanks. I like that a lot. There's a couple things that I like about that. You have a nice, tall, thin format. I love that format. It's a it's a, a one by two crop. So this was a 15 by 30 panoramic, uh, with a tall orientation. I also do them wide as well, and uh, people go crazy for them. It's really it's very dramatic and kind of cinematic, especially in the in the horizontal. Uh, nice. Yeah. Here's a, here's a horizontal of that, uh, with some kind of editorial posing. Nice couple nice. out in Napa. I like I like the fact that it's not a traditional style. I think that sometimes we see some images and, and you get tired of seeing the same format. Absolutely, you get tired of seeing the same style. And like like for example, like this, I thought was really really cool. It's it's an untraditional wedding portrait. Yeah, absolutely. I like to do something unique for my for my clients. I always do something safe, but it's nice to do something unique and different that they're going to love. That really speaks to their personality. I love that, dude. Yeah. That, that, I thought that that was really really cool. This is ah. in, out in Vegas at the Sign Graveyard. No, that's my buddy uh, Sal, Sal, Sal Sincata. That's mm -hmm. Sal Sincata. Yep. And another uh, Napa wedding. But see, and that's the thing, it's just beautiful, beautiful looks. And we're going to talk Thanks. a little bit about yeah, this, this a fun picture image. in just a little yeah. bit. But you had three tips that talked a little bit about uh, 
basically we're talking off camera and you talked a little bit about the wide open exactly kind of the, the wide open mantra or or controversy but there's a couple of different things to keep in mind with this entire wide no absolutely what, 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 you were talking about wide open yeah well, when you asked me about tips i think one thing that came to mind right away is there's a real trend you know in photography to shoot wide open which is great and there's nothing wrong with it my only concern is that i think that you have a whole range of apertures that you can work with and 2.8 1.4 1.8 those are at the widest opening of the lens right so that means um, that the lens holes really really the big the lens holes really really big so therefore your depth of field is going to be really really narrow you're going to have a very slim margin of focus so, in other words, if RC's here and I'm shooting with a 1.4 lens. I'm a bride. Right, he's a bride since the dress. <laughs> if, if I'm focusing from his, from his eye, here may be in focus, but his ear may not, depending so, on where, how his head is turned and that sort so of thing. So if my so, groom. Right, if you put a groom then back here, which a lot of people are doing these kind of shots where there's someone in the foreground and someone in the background, I do it myself and I love it. My personal preference is for a shot like that, I want to stop down a little bit. I want to be at, you know, like let's say um, 5.6, you know, 3.2, something, something deeper, so depending on I'm how need far. You to back and focus, dep so. Depending on how far. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. No, but, but 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 that makes a lot of sense, and that was one of those things where it was like a lot of times I'm like, wide open, perfect. Everybody's going to go out and do that but they wouldn't think about that kind of thing. Exactly, it's just thinking about what you're doing. You've got making those choices, like not being on autopilot. I, you know, I'm a big advocate of shooting in manual and that's the same thing. It's like you need to be thinking about what you're doing with your f-stops as well. It's like how deep, how much depth of field do you want? So, you know, sometimes I want it at 2.8 or 1.8, but sometimes 5.6 is gonna be the thing that's gonna give me the image that that's gonna work. And that was the point that, the, the second point, because there was kind of like three things that kind of blurbed out of this one thing. The second one was uh, the artist versus exactly you know, the, the exactly you, you may love that look and you may love having well let's say we want the groom completely blurred out that's not for me but some people would love that but, but again what we talked about is you're not shooting specifically for yourself you're shooting for your client and they may not really have that same appreciation of seeing their significant other blurred out they may want to see a little bit of, a, of an expression you know so what I'll do is oftentimes even if I'm going to shoot strictly at 2.8 I'll get my focus point on the person in the foreground and then I'll switch my focus point to the person in the background so that's two shots they're both sort of having that vision uh, where, where that shallow depth of field, but I know that if I need to put those two shots together and have everybody sharp, I've got it. And that was the third point that I saw with all of this stuff, which is safe, artistic. Exactly, exactly. Shoot the safe stuff, get the stuff that grandma, gra grandma's gonna like, get the stuff that uh, you know the couple's gonna like, the mother or the bride, etc. and then get the stuff that the couple is gonna love and that you're gonna love. And, and somewhere between those two, everything will gel. Right, and it, was, and it was one of those things, like I just finished coming off of shooting a wedding, and it was the same situation. I was sitting myself, all right, get a safe shot, get a safe shot. And I had thought about that entire thing. And I, I, you, you, I think you hit the nail on the head when you were talking about using wide open, but then at the same time, it's like, which one was the one that's going to sell? You know, if the groom's a little bit out of focus, you might not be able to get that. Right. Both of them are there. Right. That's a safe shot. That's the side that's going to try exactly. and sell. Now, if people want to find out more about you, where can they go to be able to get that? My website is michaelcorsentino.com. And you also have a book. I yeah, do, I do. I just out. finished out a book, um, almost finished, uh, on the Canon Speedlight System, Canon Digital Field Guide. Nice. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. Excited. Well, good to have you here, man. Yes, man. Pleasure. Hey. Very cool, RC. He was he was by the studio a little while ago. It wasn't like he just walked on and back off. But uh, Michael's got some pretty guy, pretty good insights for wedding shooters. And I have a different kind of tip for wedding shooters, but... Uh, that was pretty sweet. Yeah, I, you know what? I like. I'm like. I was taking a picture to send to you guys over on the Google Plus thing that are watching live, of just kind of like behind the scenes thing. Have you used Camera Awesome? Camera Awesome, yeah. <laughs> Dude, this program is cool. Yeah. I was always. I was always. Uh, I'm always telling everybody about it, and I'm just like, you know what? It's. I hate programs that are named things like Awesome or right. things like that. So when it first came out, I was like, I don't know, man. Well, there was but a, it is really. It's really awesome. There was, a, there was awesome. a new one that I downloaded just yesterday, only because of the description that it that it allows you to take full advantage of the full resolution. And I don't remember. It's like camera and then three letters like DPR or something like that. I don't remember. But I'm I'm having even had a chance to tinker for with For me, right now, Camera Awesome is the camera. Yeah. It, it's just 
you you can't beat Cameron Awesome. I think it's I think it's phenomenal. Okay, well we'll see. But anyway, so <laughs> we'll take a look. Let's take a quick break. When we no, come no, back. no. I got a I got a wedding tip. Dude. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And Go then ahead. we do the break. All okay. right, all right, all right. So fine, fine. the wedding tip. I think I've shown you guys half of this before. I think I've talked about this before. I got you just get an exercise mat, that spongy rubber foam stuff, and uh, I got this one at Ross. Go to Ross or Marshalls or something like that. Instead of an exercise store, you go to an uh, athletic store, you're gonna pay 30 bucks for this, and I paid like 13. But then I took part of it, and I cut it up, and everybody knows that if you're a sports shooter, you wear knee pads because you wanna get down at the level and you know shoot up and everything. But as a wedding shooter, it's a little bit more obnoxious to have big um, sports or athletic knee pads strapped on. So uh, I recommended this, so I cut these up and you know you can fit them inside your slacks and you can use athletic tape or any number of things to keep it inside your slacks. Well, what about women? Well, you could probably tape these on your knees, but if you're wearing a dress, like I see a lot of women wedding shooters, I saw one actually carrying something like this. And I went, I have one of these. My wife and I use this outside when we're kneeling and doing outdoor garden. Get this in a gardening section, but this lady was carrying, not this one, but this lady was carrying around something like this and, and actually shooting the wedding and kneeling down. Because getting on your knees in a dress, man, I don't know how you women do it anyway, but getting on your knees in a dress to make shots and stuff to shoot up, she just had a, a <laughs> is that a goofy Sometimes, thing? dude, but sometimes I'm like, this is the thing. Like we talk about very expensive gear, and we talk right. about all sorts of different things. Not and me. it's like sometimes the <laughs> simplest solutions are the best solutions. And right. it's just one of those things where it's like, dude, I would have never thought about it. Now I have like these visions of like showing up like a ghetto Iron Man <laughs> with like a whole bunch of different posts and walking yeah. around and doing that. So but think, this is it. That's, I think that's the do, kind of stuff that works. I'm going to do a cheap just, shots where I where I macrame something for the outside. Of one of these. Nice. Put your business card in the back or something like that. <laughs> okay. So. Now I think it's time for a break, right, dude. Let's go take a break. All right. When we come back, uh, we got a couple more things to be able to show you. Stick around. I'm Mike Cabasi. Come watch my new video on Kelby training. I'm going to teach you how to do the old Hollywood 30s and 40s noir style lighting, the portraits, the stuff with the hard lights, the shadows. I'm going to teach you how to interact with the model, how to pose her. We're going to talk about an apple box. I'm going to teach you about gripology, a C stand. What is it? What's the difference between a glamour shot and a Hollywood headshot? We're going to use lighting. We're going to use diffusion. Make the light turn, create separation, give it a 3D look. So check out my class on KelbyTraining.com. Hey guys, welcome back, and uh, big thanks to our sponsor, KelbyTraining.com. That's right. You, you guys have been, it's been kind of funny because it's a great place to work around here, and you and Matt were talking about this on the last show, how you've been so slammed, all the content guys have been so slammed doing tutorials for Lightroom and now CS6 mm -hmm. uh, that is shipping now. Yeah, it's been a very, very sleepless time. And it's one of those things where you can find, Kelby Training is a place where you can find everything. You can find photography tutorials, Photoshop mm -hmm. tutorials, Lightroom tutorials, um, inspiration and photography tutorials. Like, take a look at the Mike Basie thing that you guys just saw. Michael is, Mike, <laughs> is just, he's phenomenal at this stuff. And if you wanna, I, I'm a big fan of talking about diversification. So rather than try to find all of these new styles and new edgy styles, go back in time. Go back in time with, sure. with Cabasi. He's going to show you some really, really cool things. So that's the guy that I look to when I want to, you know, if I'm trying to do anything vintage or period or any kind of He's older all about look, Hollywood lighting. Hollywood lighting. If yeah. When I'm looking for that, I pick up the phone and I go, hey, Mike, listen, I got a problem. All of those conversations that he had when he talked about, that's his class. So you yeah. got to take a look at it. It's phenomenal. Oh, it's, it's great stuff. I remember him showing sample mm -hmm. images when he was preparing the class. And right, right, right. We were just mouth open it's great stuff so now you have a thing on a camera yeah actually it's a thing on a camera called a lens and mm -hmm. uh, this particular lens was just announced April 5th it's a Tamron 24 to 70 now normally um, I, I, I don't know I'm, I'm kind of cautious about any aftermarket lens because I've, I've been kind of um, sometimes happy and sometimes not as happy about various aftermarket lenses this one is a happy maker um, it fits in the price range right between the 24-105, and, and I'm talking about on the Canon side of the family. It fits between the 24-105 f4 and the 24-70 uh, 2.8. This is a 24-70 2.8 VC. 
They've actually got the vibration control. And it's noticeable. Uh, if you've got any kind of medium to low light uh, situation and you rack it all the way out. And that's another thing that I wanted to mention. I love the placement of the rings. I like the focus ring here and it's an infinite focus ring so you can't overdo it. You just rack it all the way around. And I love the feel of the, the uh, zoom control. It's in a good place. And the nice thing about this lens is that the images that it's capturing, at least in my testing, compared to those other Canon lenses, it's right on par with them. Now, let me show you a few. I've got some, uh, and these are, these are just cheesy little uh, sample images that I took in a day and a half when I had a chance to. I went to a Rotary Club meeting, and this is 100% zoomed in, indoor lighting, and um, it, there's a little bit of JPEG compression. Uh, I wasn't able to shoot camera raw until a couple of days later. Now, let me go back to that. And so there's, there's a little bit of JPEG artifacting I noticed um, on this image. But you can, I was shooting with a 5D Mark III and the camera raw isn't available for that just yet. Uh, so I had to download an experimental version um, from Adobe Labs and now I can get to it. But this was shot with JPEG. So uh, also a JPEG, but... Um, now what camera are you shooting on that? Is, that, that's, is this a 5D Mark III? This isn't, okay. this isn't that I have with me today, okay. but I shot these with the 5D Mark III. Okay. And so um, the bokeh or bokeh or okay. whatever you, yeah. and, you and Matt were talking about, I call it bokeh because it sounds more manly. Um, but I guess if there were flowers in here, we could call it bokeh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the uh, vignetting. Now, that was one thing that I did notice that the Canon lenses didn't have. This does have a slight vignette. So uh, I just walked outside the front of the office and shot this. And you can see that, that dark area, especially on the left side of this image, you see a little bit of vignetting. And then one other thing, and this is real hard to see on this version of it, but there's some chromatic aberration and um, a little bit of the magenta and cyan chromatic aberration. And because it's such a new lens, there's not a lens profile for it yet to correct for it. So I was able to do a little bit of correction for it in uh, Camera Raw and Photoshop, mm -hmm. uh, but not as much as I want. Handheld Night, I was really impressed. It was able to, the vibration control really helped. So I went downtown uh, Lakeland, where I live, and I was able to capture crisp stars in the night sky with a handheld night shot. And then uh, I've also got 100% uh, chunk of that same image right here. And it did a pretty nice job of, of uh, locking down the focus on that amount of zoom. So it's a nice lens. Is it better than either of the two Canon lenses? No. Is it on par with them? Yeah, pretty darn close. Uh, but what I would say is everybody's a little bit different. And so the things that matter to you in a lens are gonna be different than what matters to me. And also, I haven't tried the different versions of this. I'm uh, typically a Nikon <laughs> shooter, so I, I was shooting this on a, a borrowed Canon camera. And um, I think if I shot it and compared it to what I'm used to shooting on a, an everyday basis, I, I might have a little bit different experience. But no matter what, it's a real solid competitor. Now, it's not cheap either. It right now retails for $1,299, so it's a $1,300 lens. Falls right in between the price point of those two Canon lenses that I mentioned. So they're all right in that range, like $1,100, this one's $13, and then the other one's $1,575. And so in that range now, you have three options. It's a real good option to look at. I'm not saying run right out and buy it. I'm not saying which of the Canon lenses is better. But it's not like there's any one thing about it that I kind of go, oh, no, this is a deal breaker. Or, oh, you've got to get this because. There are, there are pros and cons, little trade-offs here and there, but it's a, a real nice, solid series of choices right in that range nice. on the Canon side. Very cool. Thanks so much, Larry. Yeah, and they do have a mount for it for Nikon, and they have the same lens with the Sony mount, but it doesn't have vibration control because Sony has their uh, vibration control built into the camera bodies. Nice. So, nice lens option. Very cool. Thank you, Mr. Larry Becker. Now, let's go ahead and take a quick break. When we come back, tons more stuff. Stick around. Hi, I'm Bill Frakes. I'm a Sports Illustrated staff photographer. Come join my class in environmental sports portraiture. Learn how to have athletes moving at top speed in the context of the games they play and use the camera to control it so it's action, yet still a portrait. We're going to talk about my general gear. We're going to talk about specific setups for basketball, football, and baseball. The things you need to be successful covering each of those sports. Come check out my latest class on kelbytraining.com.
at Detail TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. That was Mr. Bill Frakes. Look, this is the guy to go to. I mean, if you want to take a look at some sports stuff, Bill Frakes is just, oh, he's I mean, man. he's just amazing. He's amazing, amazing. But uh, one of the things that I thought that was really cool about the class that he did here was that it was filmed locally. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of the times I think that, you know, when you take a look at a photographer like that, you tend to see, you, you see the work and you go, oh, well, you know, that's just something that, that's something that you would do if you go to the Olympics. That's something that you would do if you go to a rodeo. That's something if you would do if you were capturing a swimming thing. And you lose sight of the fact that everything becomes something outside of where you are. It's like, well, I can't do it because it's over there. And it's not over here. So having freaks come here and do it with people here in this area, like that little league shot, that kid in the little league. Yeah. I was like, that's awesome. And you know where he did that? Down the road from here. So if he can do that kind of stuff down the road from here, he can teach you how to do it in your home, in your area, in your neck of the woods. So make sure you take a look at that over at KillerTraining.com. You're gonna be very, very glad you did. Now, uh, website to watch. Tell yeah. me about a website. I, I tell you what, this guy is absolutely amazing. I've known about him for a couple of years. His name is Mike Campo. And uh, if you'll go to my screen, this is actually image of the week on the NAP member website. And what you gotta realize is this guy is a composite artist, but brilliant at it. What you see is a model truly jumping in the air that model was photographed jumping in the air. And then that, that structure that looks like an ice cream swirl or milk or something like that, that's full 3D CGI. So he's rendered that from some CGI program. I don't even know what he uses. But then he blends the two, and the guy knows light so well that he blends the two. And his, his website is MikeCampo.com, C-A-M-P-A-U. Uh, and you'll just you'll look through his, his retouching and just be amazed at all the stuff that he can do. It is absolutely incredible. He's won Guru Awards before and things like that, but the guy does just really nice retouching. Here's one with uh, the blue collar comedy guys. Just a nice little retouch there. Kind of cool stuff. And it's just great work. It, yeah, it's great work, but he does so much of this stuff with, um, with CGI rendered CGI and then he puts people in environments. He'll take somebody off of a green screen and, and put them into um, uh, different environments. Just very, very cool stuff. So uh, that, that image, that even, there we go. Yeah, I think I might have even shown this one before. He took That's the, uh, ICP. I, yeah, he took the insane clown posse and put them hanging off the side of a skyscraper. So he just does very cool things in retouching and uh, I'm a fan. So you know, you, it, and, and that's one of those things where it's like a lot of the times, I mean, obviously we talk about Kelby training, we talk about, you know, Deton TV and things like that. But I mean, there is another big association, the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And joining that, just, just having access to all of this inspiration in one spot, I think is really, I mean, you do a great job at an image of the week and looking at all of these images and getting all of this inspiration stuff. So if you need that kind of dose, right, if you need to be able to to just kind of continuously stay inspired, right. that's great. That's just yeah, really, it's cool really stuff. Good. And you guys do tutorials over there, too, mm -hmm. on, the, on the Photoshop side of things. So uh, Mike is just, <laughs> yeah, cool. isn't that cool? That's on his, that's on his, uh, his website. It's, it's actually an image illustrated out of coffee grounds. I don't know how much was Photoshop and how much was photography and I don't know, but the guy It's like breakfast at Tiffany's meets a coffee maker. <laughs> it's like, that's pretty cool. That's way cool. Right, that's it's a way, coffee way cool. image. I knew it would appeal to you, RC. <laughs> yes. yes, yes it would. Hey, we yes, got some would. cool giveaways too. All right, let's, let's go ahead let's... and uh, this way, the wireless shutter boss, my Velo. This is a great thing. It's, it's a remote switch. So basically you can go ahead and trigger your camera wirelessly, right? So take, it's hard to see, kind of see in the back, but you can go ahead and set up something on the camera itself and then just kind of trigger it and move it away. Larry, how are they going to do this? How, oh, yeah. How are just, they going to win yeah. all this? All you have to do is comment about the show. It can be good, bad, in, indifferent. It doesn't really matter, but the comment <coughs> has to be at dtowntv.com uh, or kelbytv.com slash dtowntv. And when you go there, put in your comments there because you guys watch the show on all kinds of different places. I, I know people that subscribe to it as a podcast and watch it on uh, Google Plus. And so wherever you watch it, that's fine. 
but you have to go to the show notes or the show itself and then comment down there. And we pick one person at random to win this cool prize. But I brought some other cool prizes. Oh, very cool. I, I wanted you very, guys to know very, about very, some very. stuff from Rogue. I actually am doing this kind of giveaway over on my blog at Larry's Cheap Shots. And uh, I think there's like another day or two left uh, to be eligible for it. So swing by Larry's Cheap Shots. I'm giving away this whole package and it's worth like around $150. It's the Rogue Grids. And we've talked about a lot of this stuff before. The Rogue Grids and then Rogue Gels to fit inside the Rogue Grids. And then uh, Flash Bender. <coughs> And this is a uh, small diffusion panel. Nice. And then I grabbed the wrong thing. I grabbed a large diffusion panel. But there's there's um, the small flash bender that actually is the thing that you can turn into a snoot okay. or a, a back reflector. And then this thing goes over it to um, to add to the diffusion material. Right, 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 okay, right. so it's a diffuser for that. And so I'm giving away those four things. We'll give away one set of these on D-Town for the comments here and then over at my blog nice. at Larry's hey, Cheap Shots. I just thought of one thing. Now, this isn't a giveaway. This is just an alert. I want you to take a look at this because I saw it over the other set and I was like, you know what? Let me talk to you guys about oh, yeah, this. Yeah, this is cool. This book is just out, right? Scott's Lightroom 4 for digital photographers. He has poured himself into this book. I mean, if you want to learn Lightroom, this is the book that you want to get. Now, you can get this at Amazon. You can get mm -hmm. this at B&H. You can get this at, I mean, you can get this at Amazon. You, I think you can get it at b You probably get it at b &H. You can probably yeah. get it there. Um, you can get it at uh, Barnes & Noble. Right. But I want you guys, if you're considering this book, what I want you to do is I want you to go to the kelbytraining.com website. This is my favorite version of the book right here. This part. Spineless. The fact that we have a very limited edition of these books. And what happens is a lot of the times when I'm learning, right, what I want to do is I want to take, I, I want to go through a book step by step. And I hate having a spine to them. Right. So we actually went out and we made a version of this so that when you're working, you're going, all right, well, let me take a look at this. It's I want to look at this spire. one spot. This makes all of the difference when you're when you're trying to learn and you're trying to do something. Being having access to the book like this, mm -hmm. I think, is so good. And when you need to take a look at uh, learning a program and learning a program quickly and having a desk resource, that's going to be the best way to do it. When so you need a spiral desk, bound is only available at Kelby that's right. Training so .coms. Your best resource right now in the best format right now. So make sure you take a look at that over at Kelby Training. And we're not giving that away. That's yours. Not yet. <laughs> Ooh, did I say something? Nothing. Oh, okay. No, no, that's good. We're done, we're done. We're we done. got a couple good giveaways this yeah, time. Yeah, so make sure right. you put comments. Yeah, I think we're all right. Guys, his name is RC. This is Mr. Larry Becker, and we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys.